Antinatalism is a very simple philosophy, and I do mean simple in the most derogatory sense possible, really. It is a truly special philosophy. You see, antinatalism is very straightforward in principle. The observation is made that sentient beings in this universe inevitably end up having to endure a lot of suffering. The proposal to address this problem is for sentient beings to voluntarily stop procreating. You see, when they stop procreating, there will be no further sentient beings in this universe, no new sentient beings in this universe. And after all current sentient beings having chosen not to procreate, die out of natural causes, whatever way, then you will be left with this universe in which there is no more sentience, and if there is no more sentience, there will be no more suffering. It's a win-win situation, isn't it? Is it? You see, when presented with this sort of an abortion of logic, you can ask a few very simple questions. First of all, you can point out that something such as suffering is not even measurable at all, let alone that you could somehow total it up to arrive at some sort of grand total. But even if we ignore that howler of a logical mistake, and we accept that as a premise, let's assume for a moment that the antinatalist ideology gets universally accepted somehow. They manage to convince everybody that this is a really good idea and everybody voluntarily chooses not to no longer procreate and eventually we've all died out. Now we are in this sterile universe in which there is no sentience whatsoever. It's devoid of sentience. There is no sentience and of course there is no suffering. And this achievement, this grand achievement of this sterile universe, devoid of sentience, in which there is no suffering at all, matters to who? Of course, there's only one answer to that. But will you ever get an antinatalist to answer this question? Of course not. They'll either dance around the problem like some sort of demented fairy, or they'll run a mile, but they'll never answer the question, because the answer, of course, is nobody. This achievement of a universe devoid of sentience in which there is no suffering will matter to exactly nobody. It is therefore pointless to achieve this. You are not benefiting anyone. Oh, but I'll hear the antinatalists say, but you're wrong there, because we have to think about the potential offspring that is spared this horrendous suffering. By you choosing not to procreate, your potential offspring somewhere lala in fairyland, but let's indulge that for a second. Your potential offspring will be spared the suffering that everybody who has already been born is doomed to endure. Okay, now let's once again assume that we've achieved the unachievable, that we've achieved this miracle of convincing everybody that antinatalism is somehow some great idea and everybody voluntarily has chosen to no longer procreate and ultimately all sentience has died out. Okay, we're back at this ideal end point. Where is the potentiality now? What is the potentiality now? There is no potentiality. There is 
it is no longer possible in that universe. There no longer is any potential for any sentience to exist in that universe. So even these mythical fairy tale potential human beings that the antenatalist is trying to save from their potential future suffering no longer exist, have ceased to be in La La Land or in some metaphysical realm or wherever else. They're gone completely. So once again, I'll ask the question, this wonderful achievement of a sterile universe, completely devoid of sentience, and in which there is no more suffering, matters to exactly nobody. Well done, antinatalists. And that is why I have to reject antinatalism as the retarded logical abortion that it is.